again. Just uh, having a quiet day. It's Sunday. And, uh, yeah, I've already, already done all the stuff I need day to do. You know, it's five, ten past eight. Just got to keep feeding my wee ma some tea and biscuits and uh, I can do what I want with the rest of the night until she goes to bed. Anyway, so, god damn, this uh, shite going on in America, uh, the Constitution. <laughs> and it's like, people that know the Constitution arguing with people who think the Constitution is fixed. It's like, well, the Founding Fathers wrote these words, but 200 years later, we don't read these words the way the Founding Fathers did, but we're going to say the Founding Fathers understood these words the way we do, we understand them today, 200 years later, yeah. That's a great point not to bring up, um, that the Founding Fathers think like you. They obviously understood global war. They obviously understood mass transit. They obviously understood controlling a whole continent almost compared to 14 <laughs> little colonies. Right. <clears throat> Here's what I'm going to say to you, America. Right? You made a good effort 250 years ago. I've got to fucking say that to you. The world applauds the effort you made 250 years ago. But then you're sat in your ass for 250 years and not really done anything. You've sat in your ass and you've let the fucking right wing, fundamentalist, fascist, Christian right wing, fundamentalist, you know, fascist take over your country just about they almost did it they fucking almost did it and yeah people seem to be a wee bit, a wee bit upset about it but not enough people <laughs> it's all about something like 32% of the people in your country who think that Donald Trump is the saviour of America and mankind that is a very disturbing number Don't get me wrong, I mean, France was the same. Uh, under the, the, the auspices of, uh, you know, fighting crime and corruption and, <laughs> and all that, uh, Le Pen almost fucking won the election in France. I think the fascist right wing, far right wing in, in France, won a third of the vote. So 33, 34%. And if if they were able uh, to be able to align with some other, other parties, there's a multi-party system in France, like it is in Britain and like America. So they could have like got two or three other small parties that had enough seats to make them the, the <coughs> you know, getting by past 50%, you know, with, with you know, getting other people to align with them, other parties, like the, you know, What is it we call again? Shit. Uh, coalition government. And form a, they could form a coalition government and take control of France. Luckily, uh, Penn and the, the far right wing, 33-34% of the, the French vote, wasn't enough and no other party would, would say to them, none of the centrist parties, none of the, the left parties, you know. Uh, they they were out or not, they'd already gathered everything they could, thankfully, and France didn't turn fascist, uh, God. But America, you're still in that grip of, we don't know, unless the world is watching you. I mean, you'd, you'd maybe not think this, but I fucking guarantee you, the rest of the Western world is watching you. And we're wondering if you're going to make the same fucking mistake twice. Because you know what they say, if you keep making the same mistake, keep doing the same thing over and over, think you're going to get a different result. It's madness, you know. And you're afflicting this madness on the rest of the world. You're damaging 
an unnatural harmony. Some of you fucking crazy fuckers who support Trump know that 30% in America, 32% in America is crazy as fuck. You might be thinking, oh, yeah, see, he's talking about a big international, you know, conspiracy to make America be... No, no, that's not what I'm saying. We don't care if you have your own systems and shit. We just don't want you electing someone who's going to toss the fucking baby out with the bathwater because he gets fucking upset. The guy you had, Donald Trump, is fucking uncontrollable. He's not a fucking normal human being and he doesn't give a fuck about America or any other fucking, you know, countries aligned way or has fucking treaties way. He doesn't give a fuck. And other countries who have got treaties with you worry that you won't fulfill your side of the fucking treaty when we fulfill ours. So, Donald Trump is a fucking liability and a cunt, and you need to get rid of him. And the fuck tiles that you elected into your fucking Senate and your fucking House, especially, you need to get rid of them. You need to get back to a normal fucking, you know. We argue, but we don't want to murder each other. You need to get the people who would murder their fucking fellow uh, politician because of a dis disagreement. You need to get rid of them. They shouldn't be in office. Until now, the US Supreme Court has stayed firmly on the sidelines of things related to Donald Trump immunity of defense, insurrection, or January 6th election. And this is the thing I don't understand. It doesn't matter that these uh, judges were put in place by Donald Trump. It doesn't matter who, who put a judge in place. A judge will normally say the things he needs to say to get elected. They want that position. They have worked all their life to get a higher judicial position and use their brains to you know, mold history, right? Unfortunately, when you try to mold history against the voice of the people, which the Republicans are trying to do with banning abortion, that can turn out very, very bad for you. And it apparently seems to be turning out very, very bad for America. You've had the Texas Supreme Court turn around and say that a woman's not entitled to apply her, her application for uh, to have an abortion because of extenuating circumstances, you know. The conservatives say, oh no, we've got uh, extenuating circumstances, oh no, we cover, you know, everything. and then this this guy, this AG in, in Texas, turns around to this woman who's childhood basically going to die inside her before she gives birth. Or, or if it gives birth, it'll die in birth and perhaps kill the mother before she's in a time to go and give birth. This AG asks the Supreme Court to say that she doesn't deserve it because this extenuating circumstance isn't enough to be called an extenuating circumstance. The fact that the, the, the fetus may kill the mother is not an extenuating circumstance. What the fuck is then? What the fuck is an extenuating circumstance if it's not that the embryo is going to kill the mother? Now let's look at this rationally, people. You're having a child, and then the doctors find that there's something wrong with that child. And you think, well, how bad is it? Or can we start with the birth? And they're saying, well, we've done these tests. It's got multiple heart complaints. It's backs and two, uh, twisted in and two, you know, probably a spine of bifida. The child just isn't going to survive birth. And it might actually die between now and birth and put your life in danger. And even the birth is going to put your life in danger and we might have to give you another C section. And if things go really bad, your womb might have to be 
removed and you would never have any more children again. I think, I'm just going from me, right? He's a woman who wants to have children. This child may kill her or her womb, but she's offered an opportunity to, you know, abort the child now when, when it's safe for you to, to survive the operation. And you can heal up and, and go on to have a child in a year or two's time, try again, uh, you know, when you're healed up. The religious people are saying, no, fuck that. You've got to have this fucked up kid, and it might kill you, but we don't fucking care. Because it's against God's law for you to kill any fucking child. Even a fucked up one that's going to die anyway and maybe kill you. That doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Would they say the same thing if it was their wife or daughter? Would they? Well, we've got a lot of information on shit with that. Apparently, whenever you find out these things are happening to religious people, <laughs> they take the normal routes that normal people take. Uh, they will cover it up and hide it, but they will take their wife and get her an abortion. But they're telling you that you shouldn't. It's not just hypocrisy. This is evil. Because they actually know that. They're not just doing it when their wife is doing it. They know they would do it if their wife or daughter had it. But they're still saying to you, before they even experience it, and know what they would do, they're still saying to you, you've got to go through it because we say so. It's the religion becoming government. Uh, religion becoming, gov becoming government and then government coming into your house and telling you exactly how you're going to live your life in every aspect. Every aspect. Won't be long before they've got the kids grasping on the mum and dad at church. Yeah, the pastor will be asking the kids, oh, so how was your mum last night? And, you know, she's not been drinking, has she? But we heard she's been drinking somewhere. But oh, no, it's, don't worry, no, I'm not going to tell anybody you know. Oh, is that like, oh, she was, oh, she had a fight with her dad, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, there's fucking spies, man. And then they're going to fucking come in and rule your fucking life and tell you what you're going to do. You know what I mean? This is how minute these fuckers want to get into your life. And it'll be mandatory to fucking pray in school in the morning. It'll be mandatory for you to attend church. It'll be mandatory for this and that and the other. And it'll all be religious shit. You'll be in a theocracy, a fascist theocracy. And you think, well... What does that work like? Look at the third rate. A lot of the religious people continue to try and say that Hitler was an atheist, blah blah blah. He wasn't an atheist, he was a fucking Catholic. The Nazi fucking government was a Catholic government. Catholicism was the state religion. Don't give me this shit that was a, a, the Nazis were atheist. They were Catholic. Fucking look at all the fucking documentation of it. Interference. Not any longer. Those not that the Catholics are the worst fucking problem you've got in America. It's not the Catholics. It was in Europe. Protestant and Catholic history in Europe is very deep, <laughs> very violent. <coughs> but in America, you have the uh, fundamentalist uh, evangelicals, right? and they are worse than Catholics. I know because I, I was brought up in the, the Church of Scotland. Hellfire, brimstone, demons, devils, witchcraft, witches, yeah, all that stuff, you know all that evil dark stuff that they put on women and uh, what do you think they're going to do with women yeah ban an abortion and give them their rights they, they probably take the right to vote away from them as well i wouldn't fucking put it past them 
you know, th th their husband can vote for them or some fucking, he gets two fucking votes. And if he's a fucking Mormon, you know, with six wives, he gets seven fucking votes, you know what I mean? This is the way America could fucking go if you go down this fucking religious road. You think you dislike the, the Arabs because of the, the, the Muslim faith? Yeah, you think you hate Arabs. All Arabs are Muslim. Not all Arabs are Muslim. That's a fallacy. And the problem with this fallacy is it's easy to just say that they're the other and hate them, you know. <laughs> Some people don't even care for the Muslim. You see a guy with a turban on, you know, an Indian. He's a Sikh. He's not a fucking Muslim. <laughs> But stupid Americans, they will attack him because he looks different. And you, well, I don't know what a Muslim looks like, but he looks different. It's probably him. <laughs> oh, the sick stupidity of America. The damage you've done to the world by damaging your own society, by damaging your, your education system to the point where it's, it's almost obsolete. You might as well just hand a Bible to every kid that's born and say, there you go. That's where you're getting to. A lot of people think it's, it's not as bad as that. But you look at every political problem you've had in America for the last 40 years, and I guarantee you at the bottom of it, fundamental is fucking Christian right wing feeling it, paying for people to dig and expose and why, you know, to make everything look horrible so that if it's horrible enough people want a change and then we offer them, you know, God and heaven and, you know, I mean, this, is, this is their fucking thoughts. People will not change and accept heaven and God and prayer and shit like that for reality in life. People like living too much. We enjoy pleasure and happiness too much to sit and believe that misery is happiness. Look at the misery in these fucking churches. Thousands of people sitting around there with no clue what they're doing, why they're there until they start chanting and dancing and spasming and, you know, and they think this is God touching them. I can have a better time at home with a bit of YouTube, a joint and a glass of whiskey. And I don't have to go jumping and screaming and hoping some magic man in the sky is going to weigh his goodness on me, you know. It's just <laughs> And they are the ones who see all oh, these young kids going and dancing at raves and taking ecstasy. You know, that's bad, is it? They're doing exactly what you're doing. They're just getting there quicker by taking a pill. They know we'll get them there. You go to church some weeks and it doesn't hit you. I don't know, I don't know what happened to this. You know, I just didn't feel the spirit. <laughs> well, young people have learned how to deal with that. Yeah, they take a pill. The pill is a pill of spirit. And they take that and they're, they're a fully spirited night. <laughs> You've got to remember as well, as you get older, the spirit doesn't work so well. Basically what you're doing is you're pushing your body to produce chemicals, natural chemicals to get high. And as you get older, that gets harder and harder to do because the body dries up. That's why you find a lot of old, dried up, prunish people in the church who don't seem to have a happy fucking thing to say about anything. They're always going on about demons, or they're always going on about how life is horrible, and you know, you've got to watch out for those demons. And they're always going on about horrible, shitty stuff, you know. Never tell me about the wonders of the world. Maybe once in a fucking month. Once a month they'll show you some 
picture of something that will all lie about it and say it was made by God or some fucking thing, you know, it's just somebody took a picture of um, the sun shining through a cloud or some fucking thing, you know, it looks like it made a face and they say it's Jesus' face and the cloud, you know what I mean? Things like, it's like, oh my God, I can see that shit in a fucking puff of smoke from the joint. I can see Jesus' face, Nelson Mandela, you know what I mean? <laughs> Baloo. You know, I can see many things in, in clouds drifting across the sky or puffs of smoke in my room when I'm puffing, you know. The, the human brain is made to do that. <laughs> but none of them are Jesus or God or anything. They are what you want to see. America needs to understand that there is a real world. There is a reality that we all share. And you can go home and, and live in your imaginary world all you want, but when you come to town and meet me and you talk to me, you better be right. You better be fucking right. Because the fucking shit I see on American TV and the talking heads putting up with that shit, they're starting to now. The last couple of days I've seen you know, some videos where people call you the, the Republican representatives coming on TV, CNN and that, and then just spewing lies and just talking over the fucking hose, uh, spewing other lies. Now they're saying, oh, shut up, shut up, you can't say that, that's a lie, there's no evidence. Show me the evidence before you say it. You can't just come on in and say that and it, without saying, here's the evidence. None of them have any, oh well, we've seen things. Well, there's this document, yeah, well, show us it, fucking show us it. Fucking Republicans are tearing America apart and Democrats are sitting there letting them fucking do it. Sitting on your fucking ass doing nothing. Donald Trump should be in fucking jail by now. Even if he's not in jail convicted, he should be in jail for fucking the shit he's pulled in court and out in the street. That gag order should have put him in fucking jail. Simple as that. If it had been fucking me, I'd have been locked up. Don't give a fuck he's running for president. He can't just go out calling people vermin and shit like that. No, that's not a political fucking stance unless you're a fascist in 1933 in Germany. It's not how politics runs today. You might want to be taking it back there, you Republicans, because you can't win on a, a normal fucking debating stage about principles, uh, law, you know, you you can't, you can't win. You are evil. You're even evil to Americans. You're not even just isolationists. Want to stop people coming? In. You want to kick Americans out of America. You want to put Americans in jail because they disagree with you, your thoughts. You talk about woke. You talk about fucking being so, people being so weak. They can't just stand their ground and argue their case and put forward their position. That's what a debate is. You hold your position, you put your points across, you provide evidence, you give the receipts. Republicans don't do that. They don't deserve to be treated like normal people. They deserve to be ridiculed. You'll notice that I am never mentioning anything here about how we should treat them violently like that, because that's not what I'm talking about. No, we should talk them into the ground. Argue them into the ground. Stuff their face is full of facts and evidence. Until they fucking see it, read it, understand it, and, and go, oh yeah, okay, I get it. But that's it. We want to convince you to come over and be human again. Stop being cultish and brainwave fucking washed and, and you know what I'm saying? Become human again. Fuck me.
your money is a thing which can be lost very, very easily. And the problem with that is there are certain routes to twist a person's humanity. One of them is, uh, you know, for king and country, for president and state, or whatever you want to call it, man. but for king and country we call it, uh, or queen and country, it's king and country, but for queen and country, uh, yeah, you swear an oath to defend Britain, but you swear an oath to defend the queen. She is the, the head of the army, just like the president of America. You swear an oath to, to the queen to the Queen. But to, you're spell an oath to defend the country as well, the people of the country uh, and the Queen, you know. She's your 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 leader. You will do what she tells you as long as it's orders to defend the country and the people, isn't it? America has very similar views and, and morals and, and opinions and, and I'm sure the military do the same thing. Swear allegiance to you know, the president and the constitution, defend the people, all that sort of thing, right? It's, it's a bit of But talk about once here, but the actions are going to be the same. But you know what we would definitely not do or see as being normal? A prime minister trying to stay in office after he was unelected. I know you, your system is slightly different from us. I don't think it could ever happen in Britain. In a way, we have that extra stock gap, the king or the queen. They don't have much power. But what they are is, if you want to stay in power and be the prime minister, you have to get elected and be invited by the queen to come to Buckingham Palace, where she will say congratulations on your election. I would like for you to form a government on my behalf for the people. Do you understand what's going on there? The Queen or King is asking the Prime Minister to form a government. He hasn't got a government yet. Their party has been elected. That party elected the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister is invited to go cap in hand to the Queen or King and be asked to form a government. Now, as said, the Queen or King could refuse to talk to that Prime Minister, in which case it would be a sign to the party who would still be the, the party in power. The, the person they picked as Prime Minister is, is not acceptable to the Crown. Never happened, but it could. For instance, say Donald Trump wasn't American, he's British. Well, let's just say Boris Johnson. Let's just say that Conservative won the election and Boris Johnson was elected as Prime Minister, which he was. Right? He went up and was asked by the Queen to form a government for the people in the country, you know. She could have said, no, I don't want you. Go back and tell me to send me somebody else. People don't realise that, but, but that is a thing. So Donald Trump could have been elected as Prime Minister, but no, it's very, you've got a different system. He's elected as Prime Minister. He's not elected as Prime Minister in Britain. His party's elected, and then his party pick one of them to be Prime Minister. The Queen can say, I don't like your pick. Pick someone else. America <laughs> might want to think about going down that road. Although, after what the debacle we've seen in the, the House, trying to pick a fucking speaker. <laughs> I don't know, Americans aren't very good at, at coming to, uh, what do you call it? They keep talking about so, you know, consensus, yeah. Americans aren't very good at coming to consensus at the moment. And by the way, you you think that, the, oh, you British, you don't know what it's like. 
We've had people fucking sword fight in our commons. Yeah. Can you imagine? Well, you did have to. You you said people beating each other with sticks, didn't you? Yeah. You had people dueling. Yeah. We had people sword fencing in the parliament. Uh, yeah, we have we have had our trials as well with the political system. It took a while to. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, hammer out the spots, <laughs> round off the edges. It's been like, and it's still ongoing. That this is the beauty of the British system. The British system uh, is has not come to a settled. We, we, this is it, you know. We don't have a written constitution that can't be changed and can't be amended without two thousand. No. If the, the British people demand it, it can be brought up in the House of Commons for a vote and, make, and changes the, to the government's unwritten constitution can be made. Can be made. Uh, as I say, our constitution is not written, but we have like sort of a theme. Uh, laws should be good. People who are, who are in power should not abuse their power. You know, it's, it, it's simple, basic stuff. The rights of an individual should not be infringed no matter their religion, their colour, you know. All that, we have all that, and that they are unwritten, but they are understood because the law protects all these, these rights. America says it's a country of laws, but it's not, it's, it's a country of interpretations. Britain has a much longer period of time of looking at laws and deciding how to make them more robust or timeless. And we came to the conclusion that uh, certain words mean things and certain inferences can't be taken. Like, for instance, if you have a law and it doesn't specifically mention a person, it doesn't mean that that law doesn't apply to that person. You know, and we have blanket uh, phrases. Uh, murder is against the law, right? That's it. It uh, didn't say death is against law. Murder is against law. Death is against law in certain places. There's places where you can't die. <laughs> and there's places where you, you can't wear armour. And there's places where you can't carry a sword. Yeah, but we have all the... But these are old, old, but need to carry swords or wears armor now, so the, the default was. But they were there at a time when they, they were supposedly necessary for society. But see, we continue in Britain to add laws and add laws and add laws. And then you may have to argue an old law and, and whether it makes sense. But judges in our country have the legal way to say, well, this is a precedent in 1850. But this is 2023, and being against a wheel in the street, uh, being legal when carts were everywhere and that was the normal thing done, it seemed like a normally good law at the time. But today we don't have many carts, and people shouldn't be pissing against wheels or vehicles. So it's it's an infringement on the law. You understand where these laws? They are standard laws. Every country has laws like these. But as you can see, we interpret a law, an ancient law, and we say, well, yeah, you probably could get away with getting, you know, with pissing the street if you were pissing on a cart wheel, but you pissing on a truck wheel, which isn't the same. It's a different era. Uh, we have plenty of places where you can do the toilet. I mean, you got drunk. You were in a pub when you got drunk, right? Yeah, it's got a toilet. You could have pissed before you left. You know what I'm saying? I mean, law takes into account what we would normally expect to be the case for a normal human being doing things and whether they, through their own actions or inactions, cause something to happen, which, you know, 
It's not what you're going to get a terrible. You get over like 10, 20 pounds fine for pissing in the street, right? Although today, God, if you get the wrong fucking prosecutor, you could be prosecuted for exposure, which means if you're guilty, you go on a sex register. I don't think that's fucking right. A man getting caught pissing the street drunk going home should not be exposed to becoming a sex predator. There's no need around at that time night see a cold one with the fuck. But even if it was in the middle of the day, I mean, unless this man is deliberately you want to book his value and then when he gets caught, says he was having a pee, that's a different thing and that could be proven, you know. There'd be enough uh, people in, in the place if you ask them to say, no, he wasn't having a piss or he's a wheel. he was walking about waving it at kids, you know. So, you know what I mean, it's like, we, we we can make sense of that. American laws are kind of like archaic. You're 250 years out of date, man, with your constitution. This is the problem you're writing something down. 250 years later, people are, are now arguing about what you were thinking when you read those words. They're not going back in history and saying, so what did these words mean 250 years ago? No. They're going to the diction saying, look, this word means this. Yeah, in 2023 it means that. Fucking words change all the time on the fucking internet. You've seen how many fucking Mary Webster's and Oxford Dictionary fucking new words they put in every... 15, 20 fucking new words every fucking year for 250 fucking years. The Constitution is out of date, mate. Up fucking date the fucking shit. You're going to have to spend, what, ten years arguing about it in the States and the Senate and maybe in one vote a fucking year to change one wee fucking, you know, word in your fucking constitution. But you know what? You've got to fucking do it, guys. You're 250 years behind the fucking eight ball, man. You know what I mean? You're normal human beings. This document, like the Bible, couldn't have survived this long without being changed and adjusted. It might mean it means something different, but then what does living a normal life mean to you today compared to what it would have meant to someone in 1923? You know what I'm saying? Just 1923, not 1823. 1923, what do you think about life today, what your, your aims, ambitions, your abilities, your options, your possibilities, you know, compared to 1923, and then think about what it was like compared to 1823. Two hundred years. I've made a, a few small changes, you know what I mean? Mostly in the sixties and that, you know. Some human rights, <laughs> some voting rights, black rights, stuff, stuff like that. You know, you've made a few minimum changes and uh, you happen to get away. You learned a lot from Britain. That's, that's the way Britain got where we are. When the people rose up with their pitchforks, pitchforks and stuff, yeah, we say, okay, look, it's bad that only lords get to vote, so we're going to give you all a vote, you know what I mean, that you're going to have to win it right, you know what I mean, you're going to have to put your mark, you know, a, they, they did all the Jim Crow stuff back then as well, <laughs> it wasn't called Jim Crow, but we, Britain did all that stuff as well, but it wasn't against people of different colour, it was against people of the same colour, it was against the workers, it was against the, the poor, it was against the, the people that, the British people that worked the land, they were made to work the land f for the Lord, who basically ruled them like a fucking king or a, like Donald Trump. You imagine Donald Trump being in charge of you, are you kidding me? Ask anybody what's at Duck Marawago if they like him. Ask anyone after they've left there. <laughs> Not when they're working there, right? 
Ask any people who work to my work if they're awake. Don't want to come to the boss. Mm. And don't give me a little need to wait to the boss. I've fucking worked for lots of fucking people that are awake. And a lot of people who worked under me that like me. So that shit about needs like that bullshit. You don't need to be a horrible fucking boss. You can be. You you can fool yourself that you're getting mere work done. But really what you're thinking is you you're gonna hear me you're thinking, yeah, I fucking sorted that prick who told him fucking where to go off with. That's that's your personality. You like thinking that you and force somebody to do something they didn't want to do. One, you know, that's that's your personality. And you're a cunt, you know. People come to work to do their work and go home and deal with their life. Work is a way of earning the money you pay for your life. It's not your life. Americans seem to have this upside down. You know what I mean? Their life is their work. Elon Musk, he thinks this, oh, he's saving the world with Tesla and it is bit. No, he's not. He's a fucking cunt. What he did with fucking Twitter and X, cunt. You know what I mean? If it hadn't been fucking for all those people dying of COVID and him getting the PPI and the fucking, you know, the, the, uh, the COVID bonus to keep people in it. He would have went under, he was bankrupt. He was within dollars of being bankrupt when COVID hit and saved his fucking company. Tesla, you know. Tesla was going bankrupt. Until he got his PPI money, millions, was it 186 million dollars in PPI for Tesla? 186 million in a year. Saved his fucking ass, and now look at what he's fucking doing. You know what I mean? Biden saved his ass, and now he's calling Biden a cunt and all that, saying Donald Trump's the fucking you know way to go. Yeah, that's even fascist or just being treated so unfairly in the world. Oh my God, they're so being treated so unfairly. Not even allowed to say that the Holocaust was fucking a load of shit anymore, you know what I mean? People jumped in saying, oh, it was true, and then they haven't even got the words out of their mouth, and people try to correct them. It's, it's ridiculous, Elon Musk is saying that these poor Nazis can't get their free speech, you know what I mean? Rights recognised by America, so he's going to spend £44 billion. Pounds. Yeah. He's going to spend £44 billion pound for a company that is now worth, I don't know, £20 million, £40 million? million, not billion. He paid £44 billion for it. Two days or something after he, he bought the company, it was worth £22 billion. He lost 50% the company's worth by buying it. People still think he's a fucking genius. Go down. You could give me a billion pound and I guarantee you in fucking five years I would be worth more than fucking Elon Musk. I would own SpaceX, I would own fucking X, you know what I mean? I would own Tesla, I'd buy it out from underneath the fucker. So insurey, I'd crumble that fucking shit underneath him and buy it out for fucking pennies in the dollar. And then I'd stop being a cunt, I'd actually hire fucking business people to run it and make billions of it. Unlike Elon Musk. What the fuck does he know about everything he's involved in? Nothing. He's not a fucking genius running about fixing things. He's a little kid that had too much money and spent it all on all these toys and now he doesn't know what to do with them. And when the people that do know what to do talk to him and say you can't do it, he says, 
Fuck you. I'm going to do it my way. Cyber truck. Fucking cyber fucking truck. This is the cyber truck, and this is uh, what they want you to think about it. This is Elon Musk's review of the cyber truck. First thing I'm going to say, this here, it shaped like that in order to cut through the air, spread the air apart, go through the air, and use less energy to do it. This fucking thing. This is a self-propelled sled. It pulls itself backwards. This weighs about 35,000 pounds. As the box moves forward, it increases the weight onto... Gives you the ability to be confident on road. In order to make this really apples to apples comparison, we're running them as they come straight from the factory. So stock tires, they're running at a curb weight plus driver. I don't know what they're, they're trying to do here, but the cyber truck can pull another truck. Yeah, well, the cyber truck is probably twice as heavy as all these trucks. That means you're paying twice as much fuel to move at the same speed as these trucks. And if you're a young guy starting a small business, say, you know, you're doing gardens or something, right? So you've got your weed whacker and your mower and your blower and some tools and other shit in the back of your truck and you're going round asking people to pay you to do their gardens right? every penny you spend on fuel moving from house to house is money out of your pocket the cyber truck weighs twice as much as your ordinary flatbed so you're going to be spending twice as much on fuel to move it about ok it's electric you're not paying for gasoline or, or diesel but you're still going to be paying a lot of money to charge that fuck it up you know also what I've got a uh, crash test uh, prove you not this is, see this is like the, the only show Tesla will only show you the things that make them look good uh, let's see uh, This is so bad. Do you guys remember this video of the Cybertruck crash test that Tesla released on April 1st where the yeah. impact was imminent at any second and you're on the edge of your seat the entire time waiting for it to happen, but it never actually happens? Well, we finally got to see those results during the Cybertruck delivery event, and I must admit, it looks absolutely horrifying, but probably... You've got to remember... We've been driving motor cars for over 130 years. 140, 150 years. I mean, we had cars back in the 1870s. And, uh, yeah, they, they were running on coal and shit. Coal, coal oil, wood, you know, the steam engines, you know, but they're still fucking cars, it's still an engine, you know. And over the, the, the last 140, 150 years, 
we've learned a few things about cars. Right? For instance, uh, the more rigid the car is, the more violent you, when you hit something, <laughs> you get affected inside. You can imagine having a can, right? We a pee in it, and you do that with it, and the pee just goes boom off the wall. Yeah, if you're in the top of this, that's what happens. You know, you know. But if you're, uh, well, okay, they've got seat belts and all that now. Right? I'm amazed that Cybertruck even has seat belts. Elon Musk, why not? Nobody's ever had a car like this before. Why not? I thought, why not? Yeah. Three millimeter steel sheets of fucking <laughs> stainless steel. You can't mold it, you can't shape it, you can't make it aerodynamic, so yeah, you're gonna lose all that fuel efficiency, no matter what engine you've got in it, whether it's a diesel, a petrol, electric, it doesn't fucking matter. You're burning energy to push air out of the way uh, in a way that you don't need to. You know, you just don't. But also, look at this impact. This, what I want to do is slow it down. I don't know how to speed. Yeah, right. Any second, and you're on the edge of your seat the entire time waiting for it to happen, but it never actually happens? Well... Yeah, why would Tesha put... Oh, <laughs> this is what I'm saying about how fucking cuntish Elon Musk is. He shows you this car, the last car, well, he shows you it going to the wall hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, I bet it never hit the wall. You know that it did hit the wall, there's no way it just stopped, right? <laughs> but he never showed you the, the, the video at this time, right? because he realised how fucked this vehicle is in trying to pass a safety tier. This car will kill you in an ordinary, normal 30 mile an hour crash. The faster you're going, the more certain you're going to die in this car. Absolutely. It's a fucking death trap. You look at the front of this car as well, right? You're sitting back here. There's absolutely no nose on it. That needs to have a nose of about eight to 10 inches crumpled in. There's absolutely nothing between you and the windscreen. This is all just one big gigantic piece of steel with the door and all that, but it's one big piece of steel over the top there, I think. That's not going to crumple. This isn't going to crumple very much. And you are going to hit there at 30 miles an hour. And you might have an airbag, but the fact that this doesn't crumple at the front, absorbing some of the energy, so that by the time that you start going forward, the energy has been lessened, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's taking energy out of the system as it crumples. To bend that metal takes force, you know? And so when that force bends that metal, it's used up and it doesn't hit you when you hit the front of the car. The car slows down. It doesn't just go, doof, you know? Because if it goes, doof, you go, right? It goes, doof. So yeah, you go forward, but it's slowing down all the time of the time. You, you, you. It's taking away 20 miles out, an hour out of the, the velocity of you hitting the front. And you've got the back. But this, there's no crumple room. This all just fucking crumples up really fast and then you just go into a wall in front of you. We finally got to see those results, Dirk. There's your head. There's a, that's a crumple room gone. Your head hasn't moved yet. The bag has been exploded. 
Now you're going to see what happens when the front of the car, this is all solid metal, what happens when, when this starts to hit and there's no crumple, there's no reduction in, in velocity, it's just... During the Cybertruck delivery Bang. event, and I must admit, it looks abs... We finally got to see those results during the cyber. Person in the back, knee bag, dead. Or seriously fucking injured. That's a kid, you know what I mean? Person driving, face into the bag. But there's no mere reduction in speed. There's absolutely no more reduction in speed. The wheels are being pushed back into the frame. I mean, Everything in here is just like that, a block of metal. So you're going to go flying forward. Yeah, that's going to burn and scratch all your face. But the worst is here. See? It's my, oh, this is not going anywhere. The, all the energy now is, is in, anything inside here is going that way at the speed that the, the cab is moving when it stopped dead. The car has stopped dead, so if you were travelling at 30 or 40 miles an hour, you'd probably still travelling at 20 miles an hour, 27 miles an hour. That's a lot. And you see here, face in, the wheel is thrust up into the head, and your neck snaps just here. Watch this. Delivery event. And there, see it? Just snapped your neck.
Anyway, so I left you a long time there, and I'm sorry for that. I'm not going to edit any of this out, right? I'll be man you a cup of tea and get me to fucking change the TV. So I've got her watching Meet the Fockers. But yeah, look at this. This is a death trap, mate. What we've learned over the last hundred years is we build cars with a frame inside, which is your secure area. And then we put panels on the outside and we, we give them a certain amount of distance between them and the, the main hard frame. And the reason for this is, if you hit a pedestrian at 20, 30 or 40 miles an hour and you've got a body that will deform rather than hit them like a, a solid wall, if it deforms, it sort of absorbs some of the impact and it does less damage to the human body. The car, well, who cares about the damage to the car if you're hitting a person? You know, uh, you want the person to survive, obviously, don't you? Unless you're actually driving at the person in order that you can kill them with your car, which I've got to say is illegal. Right? So we build cars so that there is a high probability, even in the occurrence of a car hitting a pedestrian, that the pedestrian survives. They're going to be injured and damaged, but they survive. This has got no care in the world for whether it hits uh, a human being. None whatsoever. Or a wall. It got no care for the people inside the car, or possible pedestrians hit by the car. It, it has no care for anything. Elon Musk has decided to make a car and not bother to look at all the benefits of the advances in technology and design that we have developed over the last 150 years. That's how much of a genius he is. He's decided that he knows best, I'm just going to make this, it's going to be brilliant, but it's not. So he's not a fucking genius. He built a fucking brick on wheels, you know what I mean? And uh, people don't want to buy bricks on wheels. It doesn't matter that it's electric. There are far superior electric cars on the market for many countries around Europe and Asia. I don't know what the fuck this is, but it's not a viable electric car. Uh, basically, it's been sold. Very few of them are being sold, and they're not. Well, there's not going to be any of these sold, actually. You know. I mean, Tesla, the car, yeah, they're all for Europe and stuff. But this thing, you're not going to be able to buy it anywhere except America. And if you do buy it, you're never going to drive it anywhere and feel safe in it. It is literally a death box on wheels. But all you guys out there who think Tesla's a fucking genius, well, yeah. Prove me wrong, you know. Get a hold of one of these and drive it out and walk for it, man, and see if you survive. With all your bags and your, your fucking seatbelt, the what? 30 mile an hour, man, ain't you all? And tell me if you fucking survive, I don't expect you to. I must admit, it looks absolutely horrifying but probably not for the reasons you're thinking there's been a massive amount of criticism of these crash tests by internet experts see what i did there who say that the cyber truck is extremely poorly designed and dangerous and not only dangerous for the people on the receiving end of it but for the occupants inside as well but is any of it actually true well, yeah. on first glance, when you watch the video in isolation, it sure looks like it might be, especially that full frontal crash. I mean, the truck was only going 35 miles an hour during this That's test, right. and look how much force is being inflicted on the passengers. So much force, in fact, that even the rear axle appears to snap in half. 
That can't be normal, right? The internet experts will tell you that the reason for this is that the stainless steel body is so strong that it can't crumple properly in an impact, which in turn directs those forces directly onto the occupants inside. Here's a video one of the experts made comparing it to other trucks which he says have actual crumple zones. This video got five and a half million views and basically universal agreement in the comments that the Cybertruck is terribly designed and unsafe in every way. I don't think that these tests, uh, uh, this test here is, is equal. Uh, I don't know why they decided, decided to drive the Cybertruck into a wall. Realize these cars, uh, you can see that it's there's a box and uh, another box, there's two, you know, so these are, let me go back just a little bit. Right, you can see here, look, that's got a box stuck out the front of another box. I don't know what this is, but this looks like this is a standard test. These five here look like a standard test. They're all using the same uh, thing to run into. And yeah, they have a white wheel and a normal wheel you know, to distinguish what's going on. Tesla didn't do a fucking thing. The Cybertruck, not fucking thing. Same wheels and into a wall. Uh, they didn't use the box thing. They never looked into... I don't even know if this is, is right. I don't even know if this is a test that um, any agency would take the data from. It looks to me like the data needs to come from a crash like this. I think this might be them looking at all the barriers that, uh, around your road mostly are going to be this high, you know, waist high. Uh, anything on corners and motorways, but you're going to be running into something this high. You're not really going to be hitting a wall, even hitting another car, it's not going to be a wall, it's going to be more like this, there's going to be crumple zones, and the Tesla doesn't have any crumple zones, it's something that doesn't have, have any crumple zones. But as you can see, as I said, these all look like standard tests and the Tesla went, Elon Musk, let's do, it, let's do something different, because I can. I'm sorry, but that's not how you get fucking uh, certificated, mate. Comments that the Cybertruck is terribly designed and unsafe in every way. You'll notice as well, let me run this back just a bit. Okay. You'll see when these cars are coming coming in. Uh, if you watch all six, you know, if you, you take a bit and, and just watch all six, don't look at anyone, but look, look just at all six and compass that and try and watch when cars stop moving forward, you know? And you'll see that the, the Tesla it comes to a shuddering stop and you'll still see these cars moving forward by a few inches. You know, watch it carefully. This video got five and a half million views and basically universal agreement in the comments that the Cybertruck is terribly designed and unsafe in every way possible. But what if I were to tell you, and I know this is going to sound completely crazy, but what if I were to tell you that these experts may not be experts at all or even have any clue at all what they're talking about? That comparison video was put together using completely different crash tests. The Cybertruck's the only one here doing a full frontal crash. Where the well, this is what I'm saying. These are, these are tests, but as I'm saying, these are tests, but look. Others are doing what's called the front overlap, where only about a third of the front hits the barrier, which is much easier to dissipate energy. Yeah, I understand that, and I was saying that, these were like standard tests and the test, but the thing is, right, why are we only seeing the Tesla truck go into a solid wall? Why are we not seeing the Tesla truck do this test? Because every one of these trucks, I guarantee, will do a straight into a wall test as well. So why is Tesla showing you only the straight into a wall test and not this standardized test for... Because most collisions, you're only clipping the corner of a car. You are actually having this kind of collision. Most, most crashes are not head on. Most crashes are glancing blows or side blows that spin cars or flip them over. 
and this is what they're testing for. Tesla needs to go through these tests as well. Okay, you're showing us the 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 into the wall one, but Tesla, if it's going to get certificated to be on the road, has to do all these other tests. So it shows all the Tesla tests, and then we can compare them like for like. I noticed this when I seen this video, and I said, yeah, that, that's not the same test. And I explained it to you, this looks at standardized tests, don't know exactly which one, but the Tesla test is obviously doing something different. I want to see them compare the Tesla test doing this, the, the partial side, you know, front side fucking Korean, and see how much or, or not it works out for you. Or is he going to go into this? Is he going to Here's show us these Here's a comparison, showing it against one of yeah. the highest safety rated trucks you can buy, the F-150. Specifically, the all. Yeah, and it is much safer looking. If you look at the, the F-150, the head is much higher up. The chest is actually coming into the, the, the bag. Now in this, you can't see if there's much bag down here. But what you do see, if we continue... Electric lightning. You can see this guy, so I know there's, this is maybe higher up. But look at how the, the head is much more forward than the shoulders in here. But here, the head and the neck, was, the neck should be like that. You know what I mean? Should be aiming backward. This neck is, is like that, and the bottom there, it looks like it's shot forward, and I think that snapped your fucking neck. Whereas here, you get the shoulders, neck and head, all kind of like, still here in front of the steering wheel, but here you can see... Now, please do tell me if I'm missing something here, but I'm not... See that, where, where, where this part of the body, you can see it shooting down under the steering wheel? and your neck being stopped, that is going to kill you, man. Whereas here, the head is up over the top, the shoulders are back, the neck's straight. Seeing a big difference in the crumple zone between these two. Where you will start to notice a bigger difference, though, is in the side impact tests. This is a 3,100 pound car going nearly 40 miles an hour that simulates a T-bone accident, like someone running a red light in an intersection. And not only does the Cybertruck stay completely grounded because of the super low center of gravity and its weight, but besides the airbags going off, it looks like it may be able to just drive away. And here's that same test on the F-150. Which one of these would you rather be in? It's funny to me that people think that Tesla, the company responsible for designing and creating some of this... Okay, so he's showing that it looks like the Tesla is the one that, that said, because the Tesla doesn't move. Well, you're fucking wrong. Right? Let's have a look at the Tesla. Side angle Tesla. If you're inside here you're sitting on this fucking side, right? When that hits you, your head is going to smash off of that fucking thing there. Because it's not moving anywhere. That is going like that. And your head is going like that into it. You're smashing your head on three millimeter thick stainless steel and bulletproof fucking glass. It's not going to give. What it's going to give is your skull though is in the side impact tests. This is a 3,100 pound car going nearly 40 miles an hour that simulates a T-bone accident, like someone running a red light in an intersection. And not only does the Cybertruck stay completely grounded because of the super low set. It doesn't stay completely grounded. You watch this, right? There's the line of where the car was and that hits. Your head is here in the driver's seat, whatever, yeah? When that comes across, you're going to slam into this. Center of gravity and its weight, but besides the airbags going uh, they off, cut out there, like but you could see it was still sliding towards you. The wall of your car, which hasn't crumpled, it's just come at you like a fucking steel wall and smacked you in the side of the fucking head. Whereas, yeah, he says, would you rather be in this? that same test on the F-150. 
Which one of these would you rather be in? It's funny to me. I would rather be in the F-150. Do you know why? Because the whole car started moving. Right? The whole car started moving. That means that I'm also, because I'm strapped in, I'm moving with the car, and I am going to go towards that, but because I'm being pulled away from it, I'm not hitting the, 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 the window uh, or the, the frame of the door with the same impact that I would in the, the Tesla Cybertruck. Because that Cybertruck, it's not given. That car, when, when it was pushed up and all that, that's absorbing lots of energy. So when I do hit it, you know, when it does eventually, I, I hit that, that side of the door. I'm not hitting it at the speed that it would hit me at in the, the Cybertruck. He says the Cybertruck stays and doesn't move. It fucking moved. It moved like a foot. That's enough for my head to connect with the fucking window next to me. I'm only a foot away from the side of my fucking car, ain't I? Maybe a little more. I'm going to get whacked by a stainless steel hammer on the side of the head. Bulletproof glass. I mean, if I get hit at 30 mile an hour and I hit the window, yeah, I might get a concussion, I might get bruised. My glass is probably going to be, you know, pleased, and you know, yeah. But if that window doesn't break, my skull's getting fractured. Not the glass. My skull can fracture glass, but if the glass can't be fractured, if it's bulletproof and hits me at fucking 30 mile an hour, fuck. And this cunt's fucking arguing about Tessa could be safer? No way. It's physics, mate. It's just down to physics, conservation of energy, dissipation of energy. If you don't understand what, what these things are, you know what I mean, and why they're important, why we have crumple zones, you know what I mean? Why we have seatbelts that let you put, pull some and then and then stop you, and don't just stop you dead, you know? Why we have inflatable bags, you know what I mean? That don't just, you know, inflate and fill the whole fucking car because they don't want your brain to stop moving instantly. You know what I mean? They want there to be, the bag fills up and you hit it and the bag lets that air out as your face goes into it because it's trying to save the brain from coming up hard against the inside of your skull, which is what causes brain damage, you know. Damage to the car doesn't cause brain damage. Damage to your fucking skull causes brain damage. I don't understand why people think this fucking thing is something to argue about. It's a shite fucking design. It has no safety features in it. You know how I can tell it's got no safety features in it? You can't sell it outside America. The Cybertruck can't be sold anywhere outside America. It just doesn't pass any of the safety te tests. Africa. I <laughs> don't have to... <laughs> well, they can't afford them, but they're not going to have them, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, India, Europe, Britain, Japan, China, oh, fucking China won't even have these ones. Look, this is such a bad fucking design, I don't know why it hasn't been taken to court and made illegal. It's a death trap for people inside it, and the way it's designed, if you hit anybody by accident, they're dead. Unless you're just at two mile an hour parking fucking speed, you know what I mean? But the way people drive these fucking things in America, yeah, what is that? Yeah. You hit somebody, they're fucking dead, man. You hit anything fucking solid, you're dead as well. I mean that people think that Tesla, the company responsible for designing and creating some of the safest cars on the planet, somehow forgot... Mm -mm. Wait, 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 wait. So Tesla has, I don't believe that, hey, uh, which is sort of, yeah, oh, I showed you that, the fucking, like, that's bullshit, right, fucking crap, 
healing must charge, right? Hey. Safest, um, well, safest cars in the world. Tessa, model Y. There we go, we've got one. Fast sale model Y crossovers received the highest safety score of any car analyzed under Euro NCAPS newest and toughest test in model Y. Blah blah blah, right. Safe car commute recall 12 steering wheel may disconnect for oh steering wheel may disconnect from the steering column. What? There are many tests on the white pros and cons considered before buying. On one hand, the cars are room interior, it's on driving range, top not. I don't want, I want to know about the safety fucking regulation now, and the over the dirty belt court, it disappoints on it. Yeah, none of that, uh, so this isn't what I was looking for, one of my uh, safety problems. Right. See if there's any. I'm just checking to see if there's any, right? I'm not saying there is, right? Tesla issues, massive recall of more than 2 million vehicles overall of pilot safety concerns. The recall includes the 2012 to 2023 Model S, the 2016 to 2023 Model X, the 2017 to 2023 Model 3 and the 2020-2023 Model Y equipped with auto steer, a feature Tesla described as traffic aware cruise control. Be right back.
Yeah. Halfway through the fork, meet the forkers. My mum decided she doesn't like to meet the forkers. Anyway, I put her onto some hunting for Nazi treasure or some fucking like thing. Yeah, she'll watch that, right? Uh, right, so apparently, <laughs> Tesla, he just didn't he get hold of us. Where is he? Uh, was it him? No. No, it was that man, right? Was that right? So, what did you just say? Company responsible for designing and creating some of the safest cars on the planet. Creating and designing some of the safest cars on the planet. From 2012 right up to 2020 and 2023, because these are all, you know, they've had to recall 2 million vehicles over autopilot safety concerns. Safest vehicles in the world, by the way. Absolutely. Dozens and dozens. He's, he's designed dozens of the, the safest vehicles in the world. Yeah, so, yeah, you can say what you want about what Tesla is and what he's doing. And these these aren't even the Cybertruck. We're talking about the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck is a fucking death, <laughs> death machine, you know? But even these, the Tesla, I just went in, you know, because he said Tesla. Did. No, they haven't. They've had to recall two million of them, and I don't know how many they've got out there, but to be honest with you, have they made more than two million cars? Is that every car they've ever made they've had to recall? I don't know. Or maybe it's just the two million that they put the autopilot thing in. I don't know, right? Maybe some people bought them and didn't buy the, the autopilot fucking add-on or something, and they're still out there, but if you bought the add-on, it, it, it drove you into fucking trucks and shit without stopping. Uh, the auto brakes, fuck that, uh, you know? I think I can just drive right through this truck. <sighs> anyway, yeah, you can, you can say you want. somehow forgot, forgot everything, everything they learned with the Cybertruck. Cyber all you have to do is look underneath the front of it. They should tell you. Yeah, you're fucking right. Elon Musk forgot everything we have spent nearly 150 years learning about cars. And then decided he would just grab a pencil and a bit of paper and design a new car without knowing anything about car design. You everything you need to know. They definitely didn't forget. And I know that front crash test looks bad, but you have to understand that hitting an immovable object is absolutely the worst case scenario. Worse than hitting a. That's why we put crumple zones in the cars. Something we've learned in the last 150 years that Elon Musk decided he didn't need to know. Because his car doesn't need crumple zones. I don't need today what other people have been doing for hundreds of years. I don't need to learn from all their experience and wisdom. I'm just going to make a truck and tell people it's brilliant. And there's enough stupid idiots out there who are going to just love me and say, Yeah, Eon, yeah, cyber truck. Mason can't afford to fucking buy one anyway, you know. They probably sit in their bedroom playing fucking wow or something and occasionally jumping on YouTube to Lord Lord <laughs> Elon Musk as the saviour of the, the human race but this car is a fucking shambles man I'm not a car designer but I look at this and I think, what the fuck? Is it a covered fucking wagon? You know, is it a... Do you fill it with bricks and mortar and, and tip it out when I get to the building set? I mean, what the fuck is it, man? <sighs> Brick wall or even hitting a house. The Cybertruck is three and a half tons of space grade steel and not many things going up against it will be immovable. But more on that later.
The one thing that is unforgivable, though, is the rear axle snapping in the front crash test. But in reality, it doesn't even have one. The Cybertruck actually uses rear wheel steering and has no axle connecting the rear wheels, which is probably why we saw it tow in during the accident. And now that we're done busting a bit of the BS I keep seeing out there, we can finally get into what makes... I don't think you have busted any of the BS, mate. What you say does, it doesn't matter that if you're in an immovable object and hit an immovable object, the only thing that's going to move is you inside that immovable object. And you're going to be moving at the speed that the truck you're sitting in was moving at when it hit that immovable object. Without crumple zones and ordinary sort of precautions, like a steering wheel that crumples and things like that as well, you've been building in Europe and the cars for a long time. Yeah, what's going to happen is you're going to slam into the front of your vehicle at 35 mile an hour. Your brain is just not meant to take that impact, mate. It's as simple as that. It's simple physics. The shorter time it takes your car to come to rest, the mere damage you're going to receive when you hit the front of your car. That's why we put crumple zones in. It's to extend that period of time and, and expend that energy and sound and heat, you know? And <laughs> All that energy has been expended, you know? So when you eventually do hit the front of your car, you're not hitting it at 35 miles an hour. You can't do that in a fucking cyber truck. Three millimetre steel doesn't bend the same as polycarbon or polyfiber or fucking 0.6 millimetre steel, you know? Three millimetre steel, mate. A normal car is 0.6 millimetres of steel. That's why they can form into all these lovely curvy shapes, you know what I mean? And you can't do shit with a fucking three millimetre piece of stainless steel. It doesn't bend, you know. That's why your truck looks shite. No curls in it. Uh, what is it, you a woman hater? You don't want your car to be your beauty, your curvy beauty. You want to be a robust, jagged, sharp-edged piece of fucking shit. Looks like a weapon. Yeah, I think this is what we're seeing. Elon Musk and the people that love Elon Musk and love his fucking cyber truck, they, they want a weapon. They want to be out in the road. They want to be on fucking, what is it? That Australian fucking shit, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, God. He's a fucking mental man. It's the Cybertruck truly terrifying. And what I'm about to say doesn't just apply to the Cybertruck. Trucks in general have been getting bigger and heavier for quite some time, which makes them increasingly dangerous for ever. No, you're wrong there as well. Trucks haven't just been getting larger and heavier and becoming more dangerous. They're becoming larger and lighter. You know what I mean? They're becoming lighter for their real base because fuel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can you understand? You've got a three ton <laughs> stainless steel truck running on electricity. <coughs> and what? <coughs> oh, it went cold. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> How much oil and coal does it take to make the electricity to put in your car? Especially when you are arguing that we don't want solar panels or wind fucking turbines, you know what I mean? Trump, you want to see a bird graveyard just go under a, a, a wind turbine. <coughs> Total lies. Total shit. Birds can avoid a fucking turbine. You can see them turning with your fucking eye. <coughs> you ever try to catch a bird out there? <laughs> Fuck me, you're fucking stupid if you think Trump 
what you said about the, and whales, whales are being sucked up. Oh God, the whales are being sucked up. Elon Musk. And this piece of shit he's trying to sell the world like it's manna from fucking heaven. <coughs> yes, we are getting bigger trucks with more efficient engines. Yes, Elon Musk is going down the road of EVs. But nobody asked for the Cybertruck. Nobody. Most companies would have built one, put it up as a, you know, on a, a show somewhere as like a concept car thing, you know. And that would have been it. It would, have, it would you know, a normal person would have just went on and kept making these Teslas, you know. But no, Elon Musk, he had to... I don't know, be the god of trucks or some fucking thing. He's going to make this truck thing. And he's Artix as well, you know, he's a uh, long haul, haul his truck. What a fucking scam that was as well. It never go fucking up to the, the normal speed of a, a normal diesel truck. It can't pull the fucking weight he said it could pull. It broke down, man. You know what I mean? It broke down. It won't need service for a million years. Is it? Was it a million? It says, I don't know. It said look, fifty. I don't know. Fifty. It's so like this, and we're going to have Coca-Cola machines in every classroom, and the teachers going to give up their fucking you know lap dance, and you know yeah, the principal is going to have to come out and, and give everybody free lemonade. At, you know, homemade lemonade at fucking break. You know, it's, this is the Elon Musk, man. The thing is, he's an adult now, but he's got billions and billions of pounds at his discretion, you know. On paper, anyway. I don't know how, how much money he's actually able to get a hold of. I mean, he didn't pay for Twitter all with his own money. But he has five or six other people chipped some money in. He borrowed... Twelve million. Uh, was it twelve billion? Twelve billion. Um, to pay the forty-four billion, you know. And the day after he bought it, it was worth twenty-two billion. I don't know about you, but I don't know any genius who would buy something for forty-four billion just to make it worth twenty-two billion in twenty-four hours. And then not blink an eye at it because he's got so much other money that he can see he's got somewhere else. You know what I mean? And then he did, he did that. He lied. He fucking lied to people. He says he was making a deal that would make X or Twitter, you know, um, cell phone and it was already financed. Totally covered, fine, fine, uh, totally financed. I had to pay forty million pounds for lying about that, and of course he's oh, uh, it was an accident. What? What do you mean it's an accident? You didn't know it was illegal to lie about your company's financial circumstances, even on social media, when you know that people will listen to you and think that your company's share price might have to change because of what you just declared to the world about your company. I mean, I'm sorry, he's a genius, but too stupid to know that him saying something like that would, would be a big thing for the stock market. Yeah, right. He's been a wizard in manipulating uh, media. Uh, he, he did quite well with a lot of that. But that was a very, very stupid thing. And it happened when he was very angry about a lot of things. You know, people saying it was stupid, the truck was stupid, buying Twitter was stupid, being a racist was stupid, being a white racist nationalist was stupid. You know what I mean? Being a Nazi. He got a bit upset anyway with a lot of what people were saying about him. And uh, I think this kind of coloured the, the, the 
frame of mind he was in when he went on this this show. Uh, when he uh, went don't on advertise. This show. Mm. You, don't you don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? Okay, so he bought Twitter, a company that's whole company ethos is uh, you know get people to come and use the platform so that we can say to advertisers, look how many people we've got looking at your adverts if you put them here. And 90% of your revenue was adverts. You bought it, the company was then worth half of what you thought was worth, what you paid for anyway. And then you started this war on normal people and supporting fascists, racists, and some of the, the, the dirtiest underbellies of the internet. Yeah. And then you say this to the people who are paying the wages at Twitter, now X, without any damn concern for the people who, when you lose income you have to sack the people who were there who built the company that you thought was worth 44 billion you've now went in there cut the four out from underneath them and you're watching them all slowly fall off of the beams that they're hanging on to to their death you know you, you've just destroyed the company throwing thousands of people out of work and you sit there and say to the last people who are hanging on, hoping that you'll change and they'll have somewhere to fucking advertise and you just talk, turn it in, fuck you, fuck off, I don't want you advertising with my company, even though it's a company that makes money to advertise, that's its job, but you, you fuck off, I don't want to advertise. <coughs> If somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f*** yourself. But go. The self-entitlement, you know what I'm saying? Twitter was there before he came along. It was a business. It made money by providing advertisers a place where they could put their adverts in front of people. That was its whole existence. He comes along and thinks there's something different here. I don't know what he thinks is different. But the company can't survive without advertisement. If they don't advertise and make money, then, then they're just paying for all these servers for people to put their, their little twits and, and tweeters and links and videos and that, you know. He's paying for all these servers and not getting paid for people to put adverts in front of all those people using those servers, putting all their stuff on the servers, you know. All the people looking at the, the, the stuff. That no adverts. Yourself. <laughs> is that fair? <laughs> I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob. If you're in the audience. Well, well, let me ask you then. That's how I feel. So. Okay, that's how I feel. What about everybody who works for that company? I know he's bought it and it's his, but when you own a thing that's got a lot of people dependent on working there for their income to support their families and stuff like that, you kind of have an obligation to try and make sure that company keeps going and these people keep getting paid, you know. It's not just about you making profit of it, but you have a responsibility for the people that you've now taken over, you know, who were there before you arrived. And yes, you might want to make change and some people might disagree and some people might leave, but you don't normally move into a company and say, you know what, fuck this, I don't like all you fucks over there, you're all gone and you didn't even sift through them to see if they were the people you were talking about. You just, with one broad swipe of your brush, tarred everybody 
in that company and, and thought that you had to clean them all out. And then you discovered, fuck, that, that was not good. I'm going to have to ask somebody to come back. You know, it's like, this is a genius. This man is a fucking genius, man. Nobody runs a company with this. Absolute fucking, he's going to be a billionaire one day, you know? You're going to be a billionaire one day. Oh no, he is a billionaire, right? Oh right, so, sorry, um, yeah, he's fucking this up and he's going to spend all his money running it into the ground. He's going to be poor one day. He's going to be poorer than me one day, I think, if he keeps on like this. And you know what? I can't wait to fucking see it. If this cunt can't eat, you know, pull himself up, saying, that, whoa, 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 well, I'm I'm getting close to like you know only a couple of billion left here. You know, I better fucking you know maybe take us a sabbatical and get away from all this shit that makes me angry and you know chill it a bit and then reassess my life. He fucking needs to do something, man. Or he's going to end up as poor as me or fucking worse. You know. <laughs> Don't advertise. God damn. Anyway, so that's Elon Musk for you the most intelligent idiot in the world. Oh no, no, the most uh, richest idiot in the world, yeah. So Tesla isn't the safest car. So what, yeah, doesn't make safe cars. He's a fucking idiot, doesn't want to run a company. A petulant child gets upset with what people say on social media and then like Trump goes on social media there's a lot of you know reposting and that's right I totally agree you named it and all that shit you know it goes on makes himself look like a complete cunt and then says well you know what I'm a billionaire and I don't have to care about what you think about me so fuck you you know what I mean that that's his fucking petrol and Petulant, rich, child attitude. And uh, people at this absolutely control the lives of thousands of people in the factories he runs. And any minute he could turn into some kind of, I'm going to go and sit in a cave and study Buddhism and I'm just going to walk away and, and leave all my factories and just, you know, I'm not going to put any money, I'm just going to let them I'm going to wait a cave. He could do that shit. He could just disappear somewhere into the world to become a Buddhist monk or some fucking thing and just forget all this stuff doesn't mean anything. He could just leave it to fucking go and the government and the states would have to fucking pick up the pieces and wonder what the fuck they're doing, you know? You don't think he could do that? He could do that in a fucking minute. Who should stop him? It's like he said, you know what I mean? I was designing this car, but you shouldn't do that. I said, well, who cares? What if, you know what I mean? I'll just do it. He thinks he's got to get money, he can try anything. If it doesn't work, he can just walk away from it. And that's, it's a rich kid with his toys, man. But he's playing with people's lives. I don't understand you as fucking fanboys who don't see this, you know? He's never invented anything in his life, and he's never perfected or improved anything in his life. He's paid for other people to work on stuff, and they're thankful to get the opportunity to work on these rockets, but he's never designing these fucking rockets. He might be choosing between what the technicians are saying, we can go this way or that way, and we can make it look like this, and and he might say, oh, can you fashion that and make, make it look prettier? And, and they go, oh, we can do that. So long as the functionality is fine, he's like, go and do it. You know? So the rocket starts to shape and look what, what he wants. But the functionality is done by the people who know what the fuck they're doing. He didn't know nothing about rockets. He didn't know nothing about electric cars. He didn't know nothing about fucking nothing. He doesn't even know anything about himself. He's a child. An immature fucking child. 
and I think had to be maybe grown up in, in a, a, a less affluent background if he'd have been made one summer to have to fucking make some money cutting grass or some fucking thing you know what I mean maybe he would have fucking grown up different but I don't think he ever did a single fucking thing like that in his life I don't think he's ever done anything but tell other people this is what I'm thinking what can you do and they will tell him the technical thing they can do within the bounds of what he wants them to do and maybe they can argue him, argue him around eventually a design which has to change because the functionality needs to be so and the design interacts with that badly so the functionality has to change the, the form but yeah who cares a big penis going into the sky you know what I mean <laughs> That's, that's basically what we're getting from fucking Elon Musk. Lots of big penises going into the sky and then coming back down headless. I don't know if that's an analogy or whatever. Is that a simp woke analogy? Elon Musk sends penises into the sky and then brings down headless penises. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. The Republicans wouldn't like that. Then you know Musk probably wouldn't like to hear that either. But that's what he's doing, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, and then you get Trump. Yeah, and the Supreme Court spells them for Trump, but it doesn't. Because I've listened to, to a lot of people on the, the right, as well as all oh, the, the talking head pundits, you know, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, fucking, what's the other one? Some, some five or some fucking thing, that might be Canadian, no, I don't know. But yeah, oh my God, there are so many people that still don't believe that tr Trump's really, you know, another who will destroy America, you know, they, they, they still think as well. I'm sure he says a lot, but you won't do it. <laughs> it's like they forget the four years he was in power and the shite that he went, he just went through then, you know what I mean? He never did a goddamn thing for America. Four years and all he did was try to fucking finag him some way to get rich out of being president. He went around glad handing all the fucking countries that America doesn't have relations with because he knows that if he can get his son to go in the back door after he's glad handed with one of these murderers they can maybe get a deal for building a hotel or some fucking thing you know waiting on or some fucking shit you know that's he's always out there wanting to buy and sell property and day deals and what if I get America to be a bit less fucking on your back, you know. He was doing that, man. You can see they were trying to fucking reduce the sanctions on Russia when he was in power. The Republicans were all talking about how Russia doesn't need to be sanctioned so much. God damn it. You just are blinding yourselves to it, man. I don't think that he was a, a Russian spy or a plant or anything like that. But definitely his ambitions for making money to be in prison aligned with Russia being willing to pay him or do something to help him. And that definitely went on. The Russia, Russia, there was something there. But there's no clear evidence. I think that's why he gets off on it. But the preponderance of evidence over the four years, he did deserve to be impeached. Especially with this January 6th. Are you fucking kidding me? That is blatant. Anyway, I think I'm done now. I think I get.
I've said that a while actually. Tesla is a bunch of fucking shit, right? Okay, it kind of like got the 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 battery car thing going, and you know, did a lot of publicity on it, and got. But there are better cars in the world now than a fucking Tesla. I mean, some of the, the manufacturing on it is diabolical, you know. It's still fucking hand welding it. You don't get part machines. Weld to the millimeter. Fucking panels on on half of the fucking cars as well, you know. And they, they fucking cyber cars have been The panels on them, they're, they're three millimeter thick stainless steel. How is that gonna react if you leave it in the sun? Or you take it into an area where it's freezing cold, you know, minus five degrees or something in Scotland in the winter, you know, minus seven, you know. I mean, what's gonna happen to it? You know, a metal, it's, it's no kind to itself when it expands and contracts, you know. It's no kind to the things next to it either, you know. I don't know how that would work out. I guess only time will tell. Anyway, so I'd you fucking buy motherfuckers. I'll see you later. Thanks for tuning in and watch me. Or, oh, good evening. Yeah, I'll catch you later.